D. P. 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 The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Uh, so today's show and uh, next episode are going to be almost exclusively about what came out yesterday. Um, and I, I, and uh, it obviously has to do with the Chicago Blackhawks findings. Uh, I'd like to say something off the top. I know you, you're... Steve's not. Steve's feeling a little under the weather. I know that. Yeah. Um. So he's gonna be nasally boy today, and we're gonna take little breaks here and there, so you can blow your nose and I tested negative. So yeah, yay. yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We should also say it's not COVID nineteen. Yeah. It is mm-hmm. Something. Yeah, we're else. not used to hearing sick people anymore. I know so. it's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, couldn't miss this show, could we? So no, we couldn't, and we can't miss the next one. So there's a couple things I want to say here right off the top. Let me get through this stuff, and. And uh, we'll kind of explain everything in context. So the Chicago Blackhawks, um, if you haven't seen this, I don't know how, but Chicago Blackhawks clearly chose on ice success over investigating and dealing with abuse within their ranks. And, you know, in the 107 page report yesterday, as of this recording, we're still gleaning things from that. We're still learning because it takes a long time to get through 107 pages of legal documents and all the stories contained within We also believe that more information on this story will break as the days go on. So, you know, usually you have a a massive, when it comes to the news cycle, you have a massive story and then tremors ripple throughout uh, in the following days. So by the time you hear this, it's a very good chance that some of it maybe not would be, wouldn't be out of date necessarily, but there may be more information available than what is currently available for us right now. That's why on Friday, we will have Rick West, head of TSN, joining us again. Uh, Rick was gracious enough to grant his time. He's had an unbelievable week, as has Katie Strang. Uh, Both of them, uh, people who've been on this show, both of them who we respect and admire immensely. Um, So he'll be on for the full show. uh, And by then, we don't know what this story will look like. As of this recording, Joel Quinville and Kevin Sheveldayoff are still working at their prospective jobs, or sorry, at their current jobs. Now... What I'll say about this show here is there's no possible way that we can cover the entire story in one show. And there will be details of the report that we will unintentionally or intentionally leave out of this show in the interest of getting to the main part of the story. Uh, Because we are still learning new things. And, you know, I want you to know that, and I'm trying to jump ahead of, hey guys, you missed this, or hey guys, you missed that. We know. We know. And we know that you have to know that it's just impossible in a 90 minute show to get through 107 pages of legal documents. If we tried to read, read it out loud verbatim, it would take several hours just to do that. So um, we know we're going to miss important details because this dossier is stacked with a mountain of horrendous details of repeated sexual abuse and inaction. We know that we can't get to everything. Also, I want to say we need to send it a, uh, a trigger warning. Uh, for sexual assault to anyone who may be affected by this. It's very important that you, if you or somebody you know are dealing with trauma, that you have the heads up. And if you're sharing this episode, we ask that you give the heads up on this one, whether it's social media or it's through a text message or however it is you listen and share this show. Um, if you if you are so kind as to share it ever, on this particular one, we ask that you put a trigger warning for anybody. You don't know who needs one and who doesn't. So just put it out there. And I think that's the thing, right? It's like, well, I didn't know that they needed one. No, just put it out there. This stuff is deep. It's dark. It's ugly. And there's no reason that all of us shouldn't jump on board with that. You have no idea what other people are going through. And it's shocking the numbers of people who have experienced similar abuse to the ones outlined in these dossiers. Um, And if you know anyone who needs help or if you yourself need help, there's a link in our description right now. It's to Ending Violence Association of Canada. They provide uh, sexual assault centers, crisis lines, and support services. All the information there is uh, in the description. Just hit the link, and you'll find all of the resources you need to get help, or if you need someone who needs help. There it is. Uh, lastly, and I can only speak for myself on this one, I found yesterday to be one of the darkest days I've personally had following and quote-unquote covering hockey ever. Um, and all I had to do was read it. So I can only imagine what it would be like to live it. And uh, the basics are as follows. Um, As of right now, Stan Bowman has stepped down as the general manager of the Blackhawks and USA Hockey after the investigation's results were revealed. He was allowed to, by the Blackhawks, by mutual agreement, step aside. 
They mutually agreed to that. We'll talk about that. Yep. Also, he was allowed to step down from USA Hockey. Uh, also, Senior VP of Hockey Ops, Al McIsaac uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks, who's been there for a long, long time and was there during this incident, has departed the organization that, uh, according to Frank Cervalli, as far as we know, he was also allowed to resign. Um, now, there is a pattern here with being allowed to resign, but we'll get to that. Um, in a press conference yesterday, Rocky and Danny Wirtz uh, made clear, they're the owners and CEO and chairman, uh, made clear that they were unaware of any wrongdoing until the lawsuit was filed in May. It seems as though the, the, uh, the firm Jenner and Block, who conducted the investigation, supports that. Um, the findings confirmed the incident alleged by John Doe 1 took place, that Aldridge had him at his house, turned on adult movies, masturbated and ejaculated on the player, threatened him with a Chicago club's baseball bat when he tried to leave, uh, and told him he'd be in trouble if he reported it. Something to that effect. Aldridge alleges the incident was consensual. John Doe 1 says it was not. It was reported uh, to a skating coach, uh, Paul Vincent, who was brave enough to come out with Rick Westhead uh, and, and discuss what the actual events were. And at that time, John Doe 1 told Paul Vincent an abbreviated version of what had happened. Paul Vincent got in touch with the team's performance coach, um, who then got the full story and reported it to upper management. Team president John McDonough. Can you say that part again? So, so, so Paul Vincent yes. got an abbreviated version. Yes. He would have gotten a couple, you know, the tweet version. Yes. Then the performance coach gets the full version. James Gary. James Gary. I didn't say James Gary, but I just said performance coach. Okay. That's sorry. Is I'm, that okay? I'm, yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm still right. piecing this together. No, and if I if I miss any, of the, there are a lot of details. So if, if I'm off on anything, I want to be as accurate as possible. You guys catch anything? No, that, you interrupt that's me. a very key little part there, and we'll get to that later. So that's good. Um, James, I guess it's James Gary. I didn't write his name down. Performance coach took it to um, upper management. Team president John McDonough, general manager Stan Bowman, head coach Joel Quinville, assistant gen general manager Kevin Chevel Dayoff. Uh, VP of Hockey Ops, uh, Al McIsaac, and others, they were all in a meeting to figure out what to do with this. It is confirmed that at this meeting, Team President John McDonough spoke about how hard it was to get to the third round and how they may not ever be there again. Quinville, head coach, spoke about how the team was not in a place to be able to absorb this information. And let me give you uh, Rick Westhead's exact tweet on that. According to the director of human resources, Jim Gary, uh, during the meeting, Joel Quinville appeared angry and was concerned about upsetting team chemistry. Uh, according to the investigation, again, this is a Rick Westhead tweet, Bowman recalled that after learning of the incident, Quinville shook his head and said it was hard for him, uh, sorry, hard for the team to get where they were and they could not deal with this issue now. Now, that's an important detail. That's a really important detail. I want you to hang on to that last half of that last sentence. They could not deal with this issue now. Because apparently the takeaway from this meeting was Team President John McDonough said he would take it and report it. John McDonough waited three weeks to report this. He did not report it right away. He waited till after the Cup had been won. Because remember, this happened at the end of the third round. Yep. Going into the Stanley Cup final. After the Cup had been won. After Aldridge, who got to be there the whole time, celebrate, have his name on the cup, have his cup come to, come to his hometown, have a Stanley Cup ring, got to celebrate in the company of the person he abused, and it led to this. Failing to report the alleged assault had consequences. And again, this is uh, Rick Westhead. This is from the, uh, uh, obviously from the dossier. After deciding not to do anything with the allegations, then Blackhawks coach video, sorry, then Blackhawks video coach Brad Aldridge made, later made sexual advances on a 22-year-old intern with an NHL team. So because they did not report this to HR on the day that it happened or the day they found out or the day they had the meeting, three weeks elapsed. And this person offended again and changed somebody else's life for the worse again. The Blackhawks yesterday were fined $2 million for not following their own policies. 
That's by the NHL. I want to put that into context. The Devils were fined $3 million in draft picks for Kovalchuk's bad contract. Now, I'm going to stop there because there is more. But let's go through this again. I wanted mm-hmm. to give you the basics because I wanted, to know, I wanted you all to know where we're going. So I am, what, everything I told you, we're going to start from the beginning again. Yep. And we're going to break each piece down. Sure. So Stan Bowman stepped down as the general manager of Blackhawks and USA Hockey after the investigation results. And by the way, we'll link to it. Sportsnet's got the entire 17-minute clip of uh, the Wurtz family, uh, Danny and Rocky, and uh, um, of course, um, Char, yeah, Char of Jenner and Char speaking on camera about this. Jenner and Block, the representative is, uh, the the partner is Char. Char, Excuse me. Um, So we'll link to that so that you can see it because it's important that you see it. And actually, I was shocked yesterday by how few people had seen it. And shocked this morning by how few people had seen it. 17 the minutes. press conference? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, um, I mean, you, I don't know, you guys must have watched it live. I didn't get yeah. the chance to watch it live. Yeah. But um, I watched it later. And full disclosure, my girlfriend's a lawyer. So I wanted to watch it with her. Um, and so it was one of those where, um, you know, you, you sit there and, and Steve was texting during it. And I was on a, on a business call and going like, Pulling oh. my hair out, God, like, God, I, I, like, how can I be missing this? Sorry, bro. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, Steve, you said it was riveting in the worst way. I, I said it was explosive. It's, and what, you know, Rick Westhead watching him on TV, and, and I suppose we'll get to him mm-hmm. later and also Friday. Um, he said he was at a loss for words because I think we all sort of expected the worst. We, uh, didn't have the most optimism for what this investigation would uh, would yield. We thought it would be probably unsatisfactory. There wouldn't be that many answers. And th- the reason I was saying it was explosive is I was like, oh my God, it confirms everything. Everything. And not in a million years that I think that was going to happen. So we'll start with Stan Bowman, who has been at the at the center of this as a I, I think as a public-facing person in power, frankly, probably the most notable of all the names that were mentioned in upper management. You know, John McDonough had a lot of power back then when he was still with the Blackhawks and I believe was run out of the organization last year because of some political infighting. There was, he was fired under odd circumstances, but I don't believe it had anything to do with this. At least I've never read that it did. Not outwardly. Stan Bowman was given the opportunity to... After the allegations came out in May, given the opportunity to run an NHL franchise, now one did, did make the playoffs, but he got to do the draft, he got to do free agency, he got to make trades, he got to take them all the way through training camp. He got to make the team's uh, first pick, uh, 32nd overall, with uh, a bunch of women behind him, essentially as a shield. Oh, that's right. That. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Here, I'll, I'll send you the picture just so you can. No, 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 we we've done it. Yeah. Like okay. we we sat here during the summer, and I called it disgusting, and it was performative, and it was gross. Yeah, a I lot of people missed it Holy because it was shit. the pick after yeah. Logan Mayhew. So, so let one more time for anybody that hasn't seen it. Stan Bowman this summer, yeah, walked up to the podium with a thirty-second overall pick, surrounded by probably eight women. I think it was eight. Yeah, from the organization. And it's, and it's not that you shouldn't invite women onto the stage. Of course you should. And, yeah. and that's, under normal circumstances, a wonderful idea. But it felt very performative at the time. And forget that the gesture seemed performative. It shouldn't have been Stan Bowman on that stage at all, given the circumstances. Yeah, because all of the allegations that come out and the PR team was like, okay, what can we do here, Stan? What can we do to fix your image? And they threw him up there with nine other women, and it was gross. That's, that's the thought. Yeah. So, and and it, it's unfortunate because I feel like they were used, right? The people on there. Yeah, yeah it's not it, even like that's was, exactly what happened. They were trying to skirt the allegations by right. making his image better, and that's what he did. He walked up there. Now, he was given the opportunity to step down, and I I I, I tweeted about this yesterday. There's a lot of people who um uh who were on me about the fact that well you know, somebody said yeah calm down social justice warrior he only stepped down so they wouldn't have to pay him and i have to be honest with you what <laughs> it, so so i guess the whole thing is is that if you uh let someone go you have to pay severance um but i'm not sure if you guys have heard of this term uh uh dismissal with cause 
uh, which I believe this falls under because that's dereliction of duty. Yeah. And I spoke and I and I, this is how much I wanted to make sure this was the case. I spoke to another lawyer who's an employment lawyer. And I said, so let me just get this straight. If somebody was fired, whatever, they sh she, she did tell me that, you know, you can, you can go back and sue somebody. But she's like, in this particular case, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, and For also, wrong. isn't that not even necessarily true? Because Brad Aldrich was also asked to resign, basically, right. and received $35,000 compensation, 20000 of which was, uh, I guess, a departure, de whatever you call it. And he got a severance. 15, severance. Yeah, severance. Thank you. And he got his fifteen thousand dollar playoff bonus. Yes. So, so just just so we're clear on this, Stan Bowman, able to do all of that, able to announce three of the players. I think it was Kane, Matthews, and whoever else. Seth Jones. Seth Jones. Ooh. Seth Jones for yeah, I might the be regretting that pick. The USA oh. Olympic roster. He was allowed to do all that, and they knew this was coming. Neither organization put him on administrative leave. Because here's the thing. I get not wanting to make a move until, an or, uh, until, until the results are out. I get it. Completely understand that. You know, you, you don't want to fire somebody and then find out, from a legal perspective, you don't want to fire somebody find out that, that they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, these things take longer than any of us would like. But you can put somebody on administrative leave. Neither USA Hockey, the USA Olympic Committee, nor the Chicago Blackhawks, or the NHL, for that matter, stepped in and did that. So that's, that's interesting to me. Both of them got the step aside mutually agree. Senior VP of Hockey Ops, Al McIsaac, also a part of that meeting. Again, allowed to step aside or step down. And he personally handed the Stanley Cup ring to Brad Aldridge. Uh, I didn't know that detail. Oh, yeah. So Brad Aldridge allowed to resign. So here's, here's how they framed it. So when this was all reported, and it finally did make it to HR three weeks after it should have, they took Brad Aldridge in and they said, listen, you got a, you, you got a, uh, you got a choice here. Yeah. You can resign, or, and this is the interesting part. Or we'll just do an investigation. And we'll find out what happened. So he resigned, took his severance, and from what I understand, there was a letter of recommendation, which was. Uh weirdly destroyed and no we no lawyers could find it right his so, aldridge uh, go ahead no no you tell you no, say it. aldridge's file couldn't be found by the jenner and block employers e uh, lawyers even though employers from that time period had their files intact aldridge's was surprisingly just it disappeared how did that happen i, 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 don't, I don't know, know how it happened i don't know if we have the language in front of us, but I thought the language used by Jenner and Block when they pointed that out was very interesting mm -hmm. because they, in very subtle lawyer speak, were like, well, we don't know what the fuck is up with this. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, when they made that statement, the following sentence was that other employees, we had their records, but not all judges. And just to confirm what, what I said a moment ago to Adam, uh, Mike Stevens, who did read the 107 page he report was unbelievable in its last entirety night. yesterday. Mikey Stevens, 81, follow him. Yeah, he also wrote an article for Sports Illustrated slash the Hockey News yesterday. According to the report, Brad Aldrich attended the Blackhawks banner raising ceremony the next season on October 9th, 2010, and was personally handed his Stanley Cup ring by Al McIsaac. Um, if you see me on my phone a lot, that's what I'm doing. That's fine. Um, in the press conference yesterday, and this is my notes, Dan Rocky and Danny Wirtz made clear that they were unaware of any wrongdoing. Fine. General Block seemed to confirm that. Fine. Uh, they did mention that the accounts of what happened between John Doe 1 and Brad Aldridge varied wildly. They did mention that the accounts of the meeting between Blackhawk senior management McDonough, Bowman, Quinville, Shevel Dayoff, and others varied wildly, but they had independent sources who were there who said, well, actually, this is what happened. And, and I, thought, I thought it was quite interesting because, um, you know, John McDonough here, you know, Stan, Stan Bowman deserves his shit and we'll get to him. Okay, we're getting back because we should also get to his statement. We will, okay. we will for sure. That's exactly where I'm headed. Okay. There's a few statements you can wipe your ass with. McDonough basically said, I'll handle this. At least that's according to what what the investigation found and then and then waited three weeks so the hawks could win the cup or at least have a shot at it yeah. now and this is jesse uh exactly where we wanted to go stan bowman 
did release a statement. I'm going to read the statement, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. Since joining the Blackhawks in 2000, I've been extremely grateful for the opportunities presented to me. This organization, uh, beginning with the Wirtz family, has been extraordinary uh, to me and my family. That's why today, after discussions with Rocky and Danny, I've decided to step aside. The team needs to focus on its future, and my continued par- participation would be a distraction. I think too much of this organization to let that happen. Now, that's baseline PR. You're always going to do that. This is where I really want you to pay attention. 11 years ago, while serving in my first year as general manager, I was made aware of potential inappropriate behavior by a then video coach involving a player. I promptly reported that matter to the then president and CEO who committed to handling the matter. I learned this year that the inappropriate behavior involved a serious allegation of sexual assault. Yeah, that part caught my eye. So... He is saying, I was made aware of a potential inappropriate behavior. I reported it, but I didn't know it was sexual assault until the lawsuit was filed this year. So that's part of the reason why I asked you to distinguish who was who earlier. Okay. Because Paul Vincent, who is... The skating coach. A skating coach and largely a hero in all this, because John Doe, one, approached him. Uh, He relayed a condensed version of the story um so when i heard you say that i went oh maybe you know maybe stan's telling the truth maybe he didn't know the full thing maybe he didn't know sexual assault but the performance coach knew and he reported it yeah so So that's where it falls apart yeah uh he said i relied on the direction of my superior that he would take appropriate action looking back not knowing, uh, now knowing that he did not handle the matter promptly, I regret assuming he would do so. Now, there's a couple things that I, I think... He, he, he really does throw him all the way under the bus. I have to look something up here, and I meant to look this up this morning. I want to apologize. There's a thousand things, bro. So, he... Um, Who is he? Uh, Stan Bowman yeah. was promoted. This is important. Mm-hmm. Stan Bowman, on December 16th, 2020 was promoted to president of hockey ops or hockey operations to make that more stark. The move came after the Blackhawks fired John McDonough in April and delegated his responsibilities between Bowman and Jamie Faulkner, who was hired as the, biz- as the president of business operations. Why is that important? You have to understand that in these boardrooms, there is always some degree of politicking and backbiting. John McDonough and Stan Bowman, from what I understand, didn't always have the best of relationships. Um, and very clearly from this press release, Stan Bowman is saying, see, I told you this guy was a dick and I'm, I'm now taking the fall for it. Now, also important in these sentences, 11 years ago while serving as my, in my first year as general manager. Yeah. He said that. And I believe so did Danny Wirtz. Um, and it paints him like a child. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, I don't know the exact months involved, but he was roughly a 38-year-old man who is the son of Scotty Bowman. Who, they, is, who, is, who was in the league for 50 years. And they make, they make it sound like he's a dude they hired after he did a very good job on Take Your Kid to Work Day, um, which is just not He infantil- infantilizes himself. Yeah, he's also yeah. an adult human who heard about a sexual assault and then left it. Yeah, Let me, we're, we're, that's probably the issue here. You the, know? The, they're trying to appeal to well, like I mean, we've all made mistakes, like early in a job, right? Not like this. Well, this is the thing, right? So, so at, at very least, here he wasn't ready to be GM. Oh, at very least, at the very, very least, you are not qualified. Very least, but again, the political backbiting shit makes its way into the PR. I don't give a fuck about Stan Bowman. And John McDonough's rivalry. But Stan seems to think that the world does. Stan had an opportunity here to say, I cooperated with the investigation. I regret my decision and my inaction. I apologize to the player and the intern and the other player and all the other people affected afterwards when Aldridge moved on and actually went to jail for assault on a minor. Yeah, nowhere in this statement is an apology for anything. He says, uh, looking back, uh, I, knowing that he, John McDonough, didn't handle the ma- matter promptly, I regret assuming he would do so. I'm confident that this organization, the Wirtz family, will continue to do what it takes to win championships. 
with integrity and with the goal of doing what is right. So here's the problem with that sentence for me. What the Blackhawks' sole focus should be is getting it right off the ice right now. Fuck your championships. I don't care about your championships. I care about integrity and goal of doing what is right. And by the way, the goal of doing what is right, I mean, come on, guys. The goal? Just do it. Is it hard? And, and, and let me ask you this. How old were you when you found out sexual assault was bad and should be reported? Younger than 38. Right. So if you're the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks and this happens at the end of the third round and your, your superior says, even if this is true, by the way, because we haven't heard from John McDonough and we don't know if this is necessarily how the events went, but even if this was, event oh. was true, would you not? That's, that's going to come down today. I didn't even think about that. Because John, John McDonough has, has got to make a statement here too. You think? Well, I would want to if I was him. He, he looks like the, the main culprit. He does. This, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're well, Stan Bowman, he, John sorry. McDonough does look like the main, the main culprit What is John here. McDonough doing now? I don't believe he's doing anything right yeah. now. Um, okay. the main, in terms of people in the organization who ignored it, he is painted as top guy. He He's, might not have like a public profile enough to care to put out a statement. Well, I was sort of well, thinking about that on the way here. Like no one cares who the president of your hockey team is. Like I think Berkey is maybe a exception to the rule and Shanahan's got some some clout here, but for the most part it's the GMs who are the stars. And that's why guys like John are able to sort of hide in the shadows a bit. But here's the problem. If you're Stan Bowman and it's your first year as GM and you're 38 years old, and one of your players is sexually assaulted, although Stan claims he didn't know, although the report says he did. If there was some impropriety, would you not follow up with your superior on that and say, hey, how's that going? You're telling me you'd never talk about it again? You'd think so. I have a hard time with that. I be, agree. You know, that may be true. I don't think it's true. It may be true. I have a hard time believing it's true. The, the Wurtzes were relatively gracious with Stan Bowman yesterday on his way out and everything. And I have a, I have a theory about that. Um, I think he sang like a bird, which hmm. in this case is the right thing to do. Um, my theory is he cooperated with the investigation fully. Uh, sounds like he did. Sure. Sounds like he did, which is the right thing to do again. Uh, I don't think this investigation could have gone the way it did. If at least someone in the organization who knew about everything um, if they didn't cooperate. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, what he did was extremely wrong. Last uh, paragraph. I'm deeply grateful to the Blackhawks for the chance to manage the team, to the players for their dedication, and to the fans for their tremendous support over the years. It's been an honor to be a part of this incredible organization and to serve the best fans in hockey in the greatest city in the world. I will always cherish my time with the Blackhawks on behalf of my, myself, my family. Thank you. Not a, no apology. No. A mention no. of hockey, trying to put it in terms of on the ice, that's disgusting. No. Why is that even in there? Not even empathy. No. Not a single shred of, I'm so sorry this happened under my watch. And he could have said, I felt like it was out of my control and I was wrong. Right. And I'm so sorry. That, and then everybody would have been like, it sounds like it was out of your control. Maybe you could have done more. Thank you for cooperating with the investigation. But to me, that's irredeemable. That's somebody who still doesn't get it. And I don't care what kind of PR company disaster, because these, these companies exist, this, these, these PR companies that are there in a disaster situation, that's literally their job. I don't care what kind of disaster PR company you hire to go, don't apologize for this. You don't want to be a part of this. Doubling down on sexual assault and inaction on sexual assault will never win. That's one thing that as divided as our countries are right now, left, right, whatever you are, everybody can agree on that. Everybody. Nobody feels bad for you. And you seemingly don't feel bad for anyone. If this happened in real time, let's say this happened in 2021 and then all of the information came out over the summer and we found out these people had all these roles. And if everything in the investigation is true. I would hope that there would be criminal charges uh, against everybody who's been fired in this little bit. Um, I would hope that the intern 
would press charges against everybody who decided to hide Aldridge's sexual assault so that because those people are complicit in his in his um, criminal actions. So this is Stan Bowman's a man who should if this was all happening in real time. I'm not a lawyer, but I would think that there would be criminal charges against this man if this was all coming out as it happened. I wonder if that's why it's such a vanilla statement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know to protect him legally. We spoke with Rick in that like uh, statute of limitations, I believe is the correct seven years. He shouldn't be able to be prosecuted at this point. It's run out. Yeah. But if that was within that window, this is a man who could be in court every day facing jail time. I'm not sure if the, the law exists in Illinois, but I know in Ontario and I believe in Canada, you have um, there is a an apology act, believe it or not, where you can apologize, but not have it used against you in court. So the whole thing is you can say, I'm so sorry for what happened or I'm so sorry for my part in what happened or whatever. And you could say it publicly. But what it does is it prevents shit like this. Where you can come out and you can say unreservedly, here's how I feel, I'm so sorry, and then still, because the, the two are not inextricably linked. You can apologize for something and, and not be guilty for it, right? In a legal sense. Yeah, sure. in a legal so sense. So yeah. I'm just giving you that, yeah, that yeah. background. I don't know if such a law exists in the United States or in Illinois at all. I don't think it does, but I, I tried to look into it last night. I don't know. Beyond that, um, and this is where it gets even more interesting um shovel day off uh gm of the winnipeg jets who was the assistant general manager at the time his job was to manage the cap from what i understand um that's what darren dreger said yesterday on tsn right uh shovel day off released a statement saying he wouldn't comment further until he spoke to batman now gary batman came out yesterday and said i'm going to speak to uh everybody involved uh and and if any of the people who are uh, involved in this if any of them ever want to work in hockey again, they'll be talking to me. Right. He so said this, he reserves judgment at the moment. Uh, he has to say that. He's yes. a lawyer. Yes. You know what I mean? He's a lawyer. Um, I did, and I want to mention this. So there's someone named Daniel Wallach. He tweeted, the details about Joel Quinville's misplaced priorities are so damning. See thread below, and then he has a thread about it. Uh, there is little doubt he'd be fired if he were still coaching the Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. If he remains a Panthers coach, is NHL prioritizing success in a difficult hockey market over accountability? This is a similar tweet to another one I saw that I couldn't find. Um, you know, I think Shovel Dayoff and Quinville are two... They're the trickiest ones to handle here because neither are still with the team. What but, you go ahead. Well, but <laughs> someone said if both of them, if it, let's say they didn't change roles, sort of like Stan Bowman, if Shovel Dayoff was still the assistant GM of the Blackhawks and Quinville was still the head coach of the Blackhawks, they'd both be gone literally yesterday. That's why mm -hmm. I think there shouldn't be any discussion about it. It should be the exact same. Well, and and, I, and they shouldn't have their job. And you could argue, well, Shovel Dayoff is, you know, he's he wasn't in charge. Neither was Stan Bowman. He was the general manager, but there was a president here, right? So if Sam Bowman's gone, what about this guy? No, what you said about if they were with the Blackhawks right now, they wouldn't have jobs. So they They'd probably shouldn't have jobs. So um, we know that Quinville released a statement previously this year saying that he didn't know the nature of this, didn't even know about it until... Um, the lawsuit was filed, and I believe in late April or early May. We now know that he wasn't being honest. We now know that he did know. Today, he says he stands by his statement. But in the report, he says something completely different. Yep. When there were lawyers and the law involved, and he tried, and he must not lie in those situations, he says something completely different. Mm -hmm. He, so as I understand it right now, and you, by the time you hear this, will know it better than we do now. As I understand it, Joel Quinville is meeting with Gary Bettman tomorrow, Thursday, in New York. But tonight, the Florida Panthers have a game, and as far as I know, Quinville will be behind the bench. Yes. Yep. Which is insane. And Shevel Dayoff will be continuing to be the general manager. Somebody calls him about a trade today. He's picking up the phone. And, so, and I think Ken Campbell, but just quick question sure. before mm -hmm. you get in. 
Ken Campbell made a really good point. He he's has been a great, doing great work. Oh my god, he's been great. Yeah. He's, um, he's got a sub stack. Yeah, and way, subscribe to it. Yeah, but he said at it's very like least six bucks a month. Quinville and Shovel Day Off should be both placed on leave while Batman further investigates. As in, like before, you know, they at very least. And you know what? Like I said with Bowman, what would be the harm? Who's hurt by that? I know the Panthers are off to a great start. I know Winnipeg's probably Canada's best chance at a Stanley Cup. Guys, this is the problem. The problem is that we're valuing performance over human lives. The problem is Stan Bowman throwing in championships in his statement. It's keeping the guys who are performing well with the hockey team in their roles. Um, After not doing... So, so go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Well, so this tweet from... Down goes Brown, Sean McIndoe. Shovel day off in July. So this was a few months ago. This was after the allegations came to light, but obviously before the investigation. Shovel day off in July. I had no knowledge of any allegations involving Mr. Aldrich uh, until I until asked if I was aware of anything just prior to the conclusion of his employment with the Chicago Blackhawks. So that statement is interesting. And I can't tell if it's a lie or using the truth to tell a lie. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you read it one more time? Right? Please do, yeah. Okay. I had no knowledge of any allegations involving Mr. Aldrich until asked if I was aware of anything just prior to the conclusion of his employment with the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, the incident happened and then he left the team like three weeks later. So I would argue that's just prior to the conclusion of his employment with the oh, So maybe that's what I may have I may have got it then incorrect. My apologies then. If I got that incorrect. It's word soup. I mean it's yeah. I don't think it's for you to apologize for. It's that it's clear as mud. He's either denying having any knowledge at all or saying, No, I didn't know about it until it was reported to us eleven years ago. Let me ask that's, you that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly God, that's, that's, dark. It, that's no, how that's, it reads. That's so interesting. That's how I'll read it one more time. <laughs> I had no shit. knowledge of any allegations involving Mr. Aldrick until asked if I was aware of anything just prior to the conclusion of his employment with the Chicago Blackhawks. Just prior to the conclusion of his point. So he's, he's essentially saying what you said the second time there. Yeah, the only other thing it could wild. mean is he misspoke and was like, I was recently asked if I was part of this meeting 11 years Either ago. Either way, he's just throwing out words to distract from the situation. That's a good lawyer. Good lawyer writing that up. Uh, um, but he was in the meeting. He was yeah. in the meeting. Yeah. Man, Steve, that, that's stark. I didn't pick up on that. That's crazy. Well, so he, to me, and... I don't know where you're going next. I want to go on a bit of a tangent here. Go ahead. So do you want to do you want to pause before you do your tangent because we're about where we need to do some advertising. Okay, it's a little awkward this episode. So if you want to, it is. Um, it. You know, it's the the joys of being. You know, we can either put this behind a paywall, which we can't do, uh, or we can advertise so we can support our product. We have to advertise support our product. Steve needs to blow his nose, and I, then we'll be back. I was just about to say I have to blow my nose. Sleep. It's important. Everybody needs a good sleep, especially these days. Life is stressful. I actually read an article um, this week that some, one of the things that, that people do when they're facing seriously tough decisions in their lives is they have a nap. It's something I've always done, and I thought it was just because I'm sleepy all the time, but it actually helps your brain compartmentalize things in your head. And I always feel like before you make a big decision, it's good to sleep on it. Turns out that's the healthy way to do it. And if you want to get a great sleep and let your brain rest and compartmentalize and make you or help you make the best decisions that you possibly can. I'm going to recommend Helix. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know would be perfect for the way you sleep. We had to do a quick edit there because producer Jesse had to show me what the homepage looks like. And it's quite nice. It actually says, welcome Steve Dangle listeners. And here's the deal. If you use the code SDP200, you can get 200 bucks off any purchase of 1750 or more with the code SDP200. If you want 150 bucks off, minimum purchase of, 100, or of 1250, SDP150. To get 100 bucks off any mattress at all, just use the code SDP. And by the way, every single order comes with two free dream pillows. 
So again, it's helixsleep.com slash STP. Check out the promo codes. Pick the one that works best for you. Get the mattress that works best for you that's made for the way you sleep and get the rest you deserve. It's fall, which means football season is in full swing. And for many of us, there's no better way to enjoy the games than by having a little skin in the game. A little skin. Which is why BetMGM remains the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic. As a fan of The Athletic, you can bet $10 and win $150 plus a free three-month subscription or extension to your subscription for people who are already subscribed, like moi, with The Athletic when you bet MGM and use the promo code. Just sign up at BetMGM.com and use the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout. That's it. Got the special offer, the King of Sportsbook, 10 bucks to win 150 plus 3 months free at the Athletic or a subscription extension. It's betmgm.com using the promo code the Athletic Pod at checkout. It's a new customer offer. Visit betmgm.com for all the terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Arizona, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona, 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Washington, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, and Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Call or text the Tennessee Red Line, 800-889-9789 in Tennessee, or call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. You wanted to say something about Joel Quinville, or maybe a multitude of things. Uh, I'll start with Joel Quinville, but... To me, Shovel Dayoff and Gary Bettman are key here. Uh, so yesterday, the Chicago Blackhawks were the main character of the hockey world. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, Wednesday, October 27th, um, it's Gary Bettman and Shovel Dayoff. So Joel Quinville, uh, Shovel Dayoff, we don't actually have a quote from. We have his very confusing statement from July um, where he did or didn't know everything very confusing but what we do know is he was in the meeting quenville was in the meeting and said we based essentially he said we don't need this right now we're trying to compete for a stanley cup uh to me it's rather cut and dry if he were still the head coach of the chicago blackhawks he would no longer be now if you're a florida panthers fan if you're a member of the florida panthers organization in any way you know, you're like, this is one of the best coaches from a hockey standpoint in the entire league. This is something he did 11 years ago. Why are we being punished for that? And to that, I would just say, I'm sorry, it sucks. But if this dude said what he said, was in that meeting and did nothing, and we're ignoring the fact that he supposedly allowed players to go on bullying this player and others. Yeah, which we haven't got to yet, but I have. We will. Uh, he's a non-option in the National Hockey League. So that's Joel Quinville. The main character, October 27th, Gary Bettman and Kevin Cheveldayoff, and I'll explain why. Again, if Kevin Cheveldayoff was the assistant general managers of the Blackhawks yesterday, he would have been fired or asked to resign yesterday. He'd be gone. Same situation with the Winnipeg Jets. What did we do to deserve this? Nothing. But that's the situation. Here it is. This guy has to be punished. And here's why Gary Bettman has to come down hard on Kevin Cheveldayoff. Because uh, th- there's so many moving pieces, and I did my best to catch it all. You know, we've already had a few things today where we're like, oh, I didn't even notice that. Um, so Stan Bowman also had to step down as the GM of the U.S. men's hockey team. Mm-hmm. Chris Johnson reported yesterday on TSN that supposedly Bill Guerin, who is the assistant GM of that team, uh, could be uh, could take over as GM. Now, I would assume that is natural progression. The GM has left. One of the assistant GMs will take control and become the new GM. The way Gary Bettman handles Kevin Cheveldayoff is extremely important on the note of Bill Guerin. Uh, because, um, here it is. This is from Rick Westhead, October 22nd, 2001. This is this less than a week ago. The headline is, U.S. Center for Safe Sport Opens Investigation into Wild GM uh, Garen. Uh, the following article contains references of sexual assault. 
The U.S. Center for Safe Sport has opened an investigation into Minnesota Wild general manager Bill Guerin after the wife of a former Pittsburgh Penguins coach alleged Guerin covered up her sexual assault when he worked for the franchise, a person familiar with the matter told TSN. Aaron Scaldi, whose husband, Jared, is a former assistant coach with the Penguins American Hockey League affiliate Wilkes-Barre Scranton uh, Penguins, filed the complaint with the center on October 5th and has been told that staff at Safe Sport have opened a file about her complaint and intend to investigate, the person said. Gerald Scaldi, I won't read the entire article. Jared Scaldi alleged in a lawsuit filed November 3rd, 2020, in U.S. District Court in Pennsylvania that then Wilkes-Barre Scranton head coach Clark Donatelli assaulted his wife, Erin, uh, when the three of them were in a car together during a road trip in Providence, Rhode Island. Jared said that seven months later, when the incident was brought to the attention of Garen, who was the Penguins assistant general manager at the time, Garen told him to keep quiet about the assault. So they are going to replace Stan Bowman, who mishandled a sexual assault investigation with Bill Garen, who is currently being investigated for mishandling a sexual assault investigation. Yes. That cannot happen. That's only going to get worse for him as this investigation goes on. And the reason Kevin Sheveldayoff is such an important precedent is he was the assistant GM of the Blackhawks where this incident took place. Now he's the GM in Winnipeg. Bill Guerin was the assistant GM with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now he's the GM of the Minnesota Wild. They are eerily linked in that regard. In fact, Bill Guerin may have had even more power over the situation than Sheveldayoff did in Chicago because Bill Guerin was not just the assistant GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins, he was the GM of the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, which is why this coach approached him. What Gary Bettman does with Kevin Sheveldayoff will dictate what he ends up having to do with Bill Guerin, depending on how this investigation goes. And if he lets Sheveldayoff off, if he lets him walk, I don't see how he punishes Bill Guerin. And I don't see how we find justice. Well... Yeah, I think you, you you touch on a good point here, which is precedent setting. And Rick Westhead has actually been all over that that story with Bill Guerin as well. I think he was the first one to report that as well. I don't um, remember. Yeah, uh, and, him and, and Katie Strang was was linking to him yesterday, I think. Yeah, if I got it, that right. Uh, I have and, I have and, so many screenshots I'm trying to, on my phone. Yeah, and I'm just trying to I'm trying to 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 give credit where it's due to all the the reporters on this. But Katie and Rick are yeah yeah just so unbelievable at what they do. Absolutely fearless. Um, you know, my concern with what you say there, Steve, is that I don't believe, uh, the U S Olympic committee or team USA hockey agrees with you. And, you know, we've talked many times on this show about hockey culture and there's so much good about hockey culture. There is, sure, but there's so much. That is toxic. It needs to change. The good parts are the the team and the you know the uh, you know going everybody rowing in the same direction and fighting hard for your teammates and you're and you're sacrificing yourself for a greater cause and the crest on the jersey, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People can wax poetic about that all day. And to an extent, they're right. There's a magic to this game that we all have, right? There's a magic to. There was a magic for me that you know I used to you know, get my parents out of bed at 4.30 in the morning so I could be at hockey practice because I was just dying for Saturday morning to happen. So we all share that. We all know what that feels like. But it seems there somewhere along the line, we forgot or maybe never experienced what it was like to be on the other side of, of this that we have perpetuated. It seems that USA Hockey has forgotten that. I mean, I think we, we all know, we remember what, I mean, the pandemic, I think, was raging, but the John Van Beesbrook stuff that came out. I mean, Bill Peters got fired by the Calgary Flames for about the same as John Van Beesbrook didn't get fired for. Well, that's what I was just trying to look up is uh, even worse is this decision of who replaces Stan Bowman, I think, may be made by John Van Beesbrook. Are there any good people like involved 
in, there are in this there are. ecosystem. There are. You, you know what I mean? There are. It's just that the it's 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 this whole like let's stick together and protect the fort rather than hey let's learn from this, take our fucking medicine, go to some classes. You know, and and the thing is, you got to be. How honest. about this? You've been accused of some gnarly shit. Get the fuck out of my fort. Right. Yeah, that too. Like you know, I I think yeah, I agree, agree. Um, so at the end of the day, here, where we're going with is USA Hockey has let us down before. They could have put Bowman on administrative leave. They should put Garen on administrative leave now, the, pending the results of this. Yeah, and it's. It's weird because the only reason that this story comes out now and that there's um, this um, action is allowed to be filed somewhere is because Garen is with USA Hockey. Because the, um, the incident is filed with the U.S. Center for Safe Sport. So they're an organization where if there is a sexual assault within um, the USA Olympic Committee, like anywhere in it. Weren't they involved can, in the gymnastics thing? I believe so, yeah, okay. but they're a very small organization. But because Garen is now an employee of USA Hockey, he's now subject to U.S. Center for Safe Sport. So if Garen was never named to the U.S. Olympic team, this is all still where it was, which is um, in settlement talks with Jared and the Penguins. So that's where the lawsuit is right now. And then this filing with the U.S. Center for Sport would have never come out if Garen wasn't given this job. And uh, I, another thing I just remembered, so I was, again, I was watching TSN's breakdown. Um, they were talking about, so uh, the Chicago Blackhawks right now don't have a general manager. They have an interim general manager. I can't remember who it is. They weren't with the Blackhawks at the time of the scandal. Um, but they were talking about potential candidates to become general manager. And one of the guys named was Jim Rutherford who was Bill Guerin's general manager when what allegedly happened with Wilkesbury happened. Again, I ask, is anyone in this ecosystem... Like, this is when right. people get very defensive about hockey and hockey culture because hockey's given them a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It's their life, and, and it's, it's given them a good life. Do, do you see this unbelievable spider web of monstrosity that we're weaving here? When we talk about hockey culture, uh, we're talking about just guy after guy after guy. You're, you're knocking down these chess pieces, and then the next one who comes up is guilty of the same thing, or at least accused of the same thing, or involved in the exact same thing. And then when someone tries to... Um, go against the grain or break down what hockey culture is, they get let go. Like in the Garen incident, when I'm just trying to get the names right, Jared uh, Scaldi, am I saying that correctly? I have no idea. Jared Scaldi, whose wife was assaulted by the Wilkes Wilkesbury Scranton head coach. Um, Donatelli. Don Clark Donatelli. Yeah. Um, when he reported that, uh, it was kept under wraps. And then in May of 2020, they let him go and they say it's for COVID reasons because they're not playing. Right. And then that's where a lawsuit comes about because he alleges that it's because he reported the assault. And it's just, it's a shame that within this, the, the fort, we called it, um, that when you try and report something, you get let go. Your story is silenced. And there's, and there's no, and then these people, they get to keep their jobs and they get more jobs within, within the little organization that we call hockey. Now, re real quick, like I don't, I want to be careful. I'm not accusing Jim Rutherford of anything, but as as the Garen investigation progresses, I imagine they will be speaking to him. That, oh, that just, was that was his boss. Yeah, right. Sure. When, when this happened, they have also to. remember Jim Rutherford uh, unceremoniously and early in the season a few years ago just left the team. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. That was all. Very I think that strange. was a fight with what? ownership. I think that was Lemieux and company. I don't know. I think if, if your AHL remember. head coach assaults uh, another employee's wife. And it's reported to the AHL GM. I'm uh, just by the way the Blackhawks investigation laid out in the entire report. There's meetings. People know. People talk about it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard for me to imagine Jim Rutherford wouldn't have known. So well, and I got to jump in here. Yeah. Sure. So 
sorry, we're going into the other. There's so but, yeah, there's a yeah. lot, and I, as I told you, there's stuff that we just we haven't even gotten to Black Ace One here. Like there's so much, but but Bergevin, you Bergevin, counted five yeah. victims. Yeah, so I was still a little sorry. confused about that, but as I understand it, sorry man, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I keep... as I understand it, there are five alleged victims. There's John Doe one. Mm -hmm. There's John Doe two, who is the high school student who Brad Aldrich went to prison for. Right. There was Black Ace one. Who, was it, it was a call up? It was a black ace. So a black ace, by the way, not everyone knows that term. It's basically you get called up and you're supposed to skate with the team. And if there's a bunch of injuries, you get to play. It mm -hmm. happens sometimes. And they're often a really neat story. Um, black ace one. And they're usually guys from like where? Like they just the minors. Team? So, yeah. Sometimes from junior. Okay. Yeah. Uh, black ace one, I believe uh, in the report said that and I guess we're still going to get to this. Um, they were chased around the ice by a former Blackhawks teammate. Yeah, this is why I don't want to get into that right now. This is why I wanted to jump in. Okay, so there's... Because uh, I've got so that I'll whole stop thing. talking about that one. Yeah, yeah. Then there's Black Ace 2. One of those two Black Aces is the Blackhawks player who wanted nothing to do with this investigation. I don't know who is who. And there's also the intern. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who was assaulted, remember, in the, t in the three weeks that, for, you know... That it was reported, or sorry, not reported, mm -hmm. right? That that Stanley Cup thing. Yeah, part of part of the violation, like when when the league says that the Blackhawks violated their own terms, is they had Brad Aldrich basically sign papers like, "Hey, you're gone, mm -hmm. and stay gone." Yeah. Uh, but then he was able to come back, participate in all the Stanley Cup celebrations. Uh, he was invited into the building, personally given a, a Stanley Cup ring, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that brings me to, um, and I, I just wanted to quickly touch on Joel Quinville and Kevin Shevel day off. While you guys were talking, I was looking up the owners of, of both teams because, you know, if I'm the owner of an organization, um, which I am, uh, <laughs> Jesse, Steve, and I are the owners of SDPN. Um, I can tell you what I would do in that. And I have a, we have a small little company that may have not a lot of revenue. But we are a small little company, and we are we do exist as owners. We're a company. We if we we're a team. We do. Live um, in a company. as as if if this comes to your attention, and any small business owner or big business owner would normally do this. I would think there's nothing stopping the Jets and the Panthers organization. That's True North Sports and Entertainment and Sunrise Sports and Entertainment. That's Mark Chipman, David Thompson the Third, Vinny Viola, and Doug Sifu. All of you, there is nothing stopping you right now from putting these guys on administrative leave right now. Nothing. This is your organization. You go ahead and do what you want. I don't care what Bettman says. Well, Bettman might say, well, let's not do anything until I've talked to them. Sorry, but I say, Gary, with respect, you're my employee. I pay, you know, a 32nd of your salary. I'll do what I want in my organization. And I'm concerned about how we look to the public that consumes our product. And if you are an owner of either of those two teams, I would be concerned. I would be concerned, at very least concerned. What is the harm in pulling these guys back? And remember that these guys have that power to do that. Why they are holding back, I couldn't tell you. But I have a real problem with the fact that those four people who are the principal owners in both True North Sports and Entertainment and Sunrise Sports and Entertainment are not. It's a problem. So that's why I wanted to talk about that. Sure. Now we could talk about, you know, Black Ace One here because I want to read that statement out. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Jesse, you okay over there? Just want to check in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes we have tech issues in the show and I don't want to, didn't want to move that's all good. forward too quickly here. So um, Black Ace One. And we haven't gotten to the, the fine that the NHL put out there, by the way. It's crazy. Two million bucks. Two million bucks. Remember, Kovalchuk. Three million. Um, Greg Wyshynski screen grabbed this and I thought it was good. I'm going to read what's well, not good, but I thought it was telling. In 2010, rumors of an incident between Black Ace One and Aldridge started and followed Black Ace One for years. Black Ace One recalled being asked by a couple players about whether Aldridge gave Black Ace One a blowjob. Black Ace One recalled laughing off the question and saying no. Former coach for the Rockford Ice Hogs wrote in 2011 in an evaluation of Black Ace One, I think what happened last spring with Brad Aldrich weighed heavily on Black Ace One this year big time. 
When interviewed, the former coach stated he never spoke to Black Ace One about Aldrich and based the note in evaluation on rumors he'd heard at the time. Black Ace One also recalled an incident in approximately 2014 where he was chased around the ice by a former Blackhawks player who called Black Ace One the F word that is a slur for homosexuals. Yep. I don't need to repeat it. And asked Black Ace One if he would if he liked that blowjob or what. So, um, you know, sorry, one one little bit of minutiae. Please, there. please, please. Uh, so they said a coach with the Rockford Ice Hogs. I saw Bill Peters' name getting thrown around a lot. I had also read assistant coach. So because Bill Peters would have been the head coach at the time. Um, yeah, we we don't know who it was. And when it when it comes to uh, names involved in this, so. That's that coach. Mm -hmm. That's John Doe. That's a lot of people. If there are, if there isn't a name mentioned, you shouldn't try to figure out. People yeah. gotta stop that. Yeah, please, yeah. please stop that. Yeah. Please stop that. And if uh, you're a reporter, please do not tweet out those details. It's in, it's in yeah. the report. Please stop. Stop well, trying to leave breadcrumbs to find people. Yes, That's well, disgusting. And definitely don't. Unfortunately, the report does leave a trail. And uh, there was a reporter who screen grabbed that particular. A particular passage use your use your head use your head don't do not and understand that you have influence yeah. right you have influence take that there's some responsibility with that um and this is interesting danny wertz and this is this fucking killed me man so the bowman statement killed me okay mm -hmm. this killed me i was so impressed with rocky and danny wertz until this because you rarely ever see billionaires sitting there going you know what we really this is unfucking real like i can't believe this happened under my watch i did notice that very early on they're like and we didn't know i was yeah. like yeah all right fair yeah, enough yeah. okay mm -hmm. i would and, i would get that out there too if, if i was you. and if you're john mcdonough um you're probably not telling him about your worst fucking moment right yeah. i can see how it to me it's completely plausible they didn't know completely yeah. and the investigation proved that yeah. yeah so they're exonerated on that yeah but this is what Fucking drives me crazy, man. I'm excited because I don't know what you're about to say. I don't either. About minute 16, no, these 17. fucking guys, Danny Wirtz, who is the younger, Rocky is the CEO, I believe Danny is the chairman. I think you're right. Uh, Danny Wirtz said he directed his legal department to come to a settlement with both players and the intern. That would be John Doe 1, Black Ace 1, I think, and because I don't think John Doe 2 is involved, and then the intern who was assaulted as well. Yeah, John Doe 2, to my understanding, is involved in it in different litigation. Okay. Okay. I well, think it may involve the Blackhawks. So here's the problem. So uh, well, here's the problem I have. Hold on, hold on. What is the thing about the settlement? What is oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So he said he directed his legal department to come to a settlement, but with both the players and the intern who are suing. Like now? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, go and settle like this. Currently. Pay them. Oh, wow. But here's how he, here's how he fucking phrased it. And I turned, it, I turned to my girlfriend and I said, did he need to say that? And she said, absolutely not. And here's what he said. Despite the fact that we believe we have a great legal defense, I have directed my legal department to come to settlement with both players in the intern. So he's saying, if we believe that this, if this went to court, we would win. Yeah. But we are doing a really good thing and we're just going to settle and make it go away. Right. You I mean, that is, that is what he's saying. Oh, God. That is what he's saying. And that is, to me, whether that's true or not, completely unnecessary. Sometimes you tell on yourself and you slip up. That's an instance right that, there. Well, I, I don't know. And then here's the other part that drove me fucking crazy. And maybe, you know, maybe sometimes in a learning process, and I want to give Danny and Rocky Wirtz an opportunity to learn and grow here. I do. I say, I say this fucking guy, I don't want to write people off forever. I hate doing that especially ones that didn't directly perpetrate this shit. But he also applauded Stan Bowman for cooperating completely with the investigation, which, you know, is the bare fucking minimum. Yeah, but it is the bare minimum, but a lot of people don't do that. And that's why I said near the beginning that I think he sang like a bird. I think he was very cooperative, and I think he helped out in this investigation, and that's why they've been so thankful to him. Sure. I, just, I have a hard time giving this man props when I think he's done something criminal. I agree with you. It's negligence. I agree. At the very least, it's negligence, yeah, right? At the very least, it's negligence. Yeah. And, and 
I, you know, and this is what drives me nuts, man. It's that, and again, I, I think the Wurtz is really genuinely meant to do good by this. If this investigation doesn't show that, I mean, I don't know what does. They didn't whitewash anything. They came right out with it. But when you say shit like that, first off, yesterday is not the day to compliment Stan Bowman. Whether or not you want to compliment him in private is your business. But publicly comment, you're going to take time out of a 17-minute statement to compliment Stan Bowman? Come on, guys. And then beyond that, you're saying, hey, we got a great legal case here. But you know what? We're good, guys. We'll pay him. You're billionaires. This will cost you nothing. Right. Do you, the right thing. You won't how about you say, gone. how all you had to say was, we've directed our legal team to do, come to a settlement with both players. That's all you had to say. And by the way, that's good PR. It makes you look really good. You know what? Something happened here. It was terrible. It was at our organization. We didn't know, but we want to do the right thing. Instead, you were like, hey, ah, we'd still win this fight, but we're not gonna. We chose not to. You're lucky. That is, that is I don't know what the word is. I don't have a, I don't have a word. And they might look at it like I don't they didn't have to say they were settling anything. But then someone might ask the question yeah. and they could say we're going to settle. Imagine and no, not but, mention the part but, where they would win legally. Okay, okay. So imagine go, they take yeah, because imagine this Steve. Yeah. They they fight this. <laughs> imagine they take this to oh, court. I know. I know. They have to settle this. Yeah. I don't care if they think they'd win in court. Where they're going to lose is the court of public opinion. The people buying their jerseys. I am shocked, by the way, that they have not canceled tonight's Toronto Maple Leaf Chicago Blackhawks game. We'll all be watching. And I and from every Blackhawks fan I've heard from, with the exception of a few trolls or whatever, which is anything, all of them are shocked, disgusted, and just about done. That's a great point. Yeah. Maybe it's time to cancel a game. Well, dude, I, I said to you guys upstairs before we started the show, like I think this game is going to be stopped at least once. Because of the fans? Because of the fans doing Chicago's not something, a, it's, throwing it's, something on the ice. Not a wallflower town. People threw a jersey on the ice for just losing hockey games. Yeah. Imagine what's going to happen they, here. They moved the, the coach before the first game. Right. Well, the, I was going to tweet this, but like, uh, hey, for anyone who has tickets to tomorrow night's game, are you going? Mm -hmm. Like, Why do you want to show up for that? Yeah, that's... Uh, I think, you know what, I'd want to be there to, 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 boo, to boo the people in... I would Show want to be up, there. boo, and leave? Yeah, <laughs> I'd want to be there for that. Yeah, I, I would be, if this happened with the Leafs, I would want to be there. That'd be a hell because of a statement. Because I have pumped the Leafs tires for, I don't know, 25 of my 33 years whenever I became a Leaf fan. And if the Leafs let me down like this, if I love the Blackhawks the way I love the Toronto Maple Leafs, I would be right in there going, this is fucking unreal, yeah. bad, bad, bad. And, and so I don't blame anybody for going tonight. But regardless of all of that, I just think it's shocking. Now, let's talk about the players here. So of the 14 players on the 2010 team interviewed by Shar from, uh, from Jenner and Block, yeah. six players said they had no knowledge of inappropriate con uh, conduct by Aldrich. Six players told Shar they only learned of inappropriate conduct through rumors after Aldrich was fired by Chicago. Uh, according, And it's worth noting here, and Rick West had tweeted all this too, it's worth remembering that Brent Sopel said everybody knew. Mm -hmm. Brent Sopel and Nick Boynton said that. And, and from Ken Campbell's article, again, I encourage you to read this. The report details how Aldridge threatened not only physical violence to the player known as John Doe, but also pointed out that he had the power to dictate John Doe's career. You want silence? Well, read the report. Even former players like Brent Sopel and Nick Boynton, who claimed that, quote, everyone knew and were talking about how Aldridge wanted to, quote, touch penises, managed to put it in the vault when asked for particulars. We pressed Sopel and Boynton for details regarding which conversations and with whom led, led them to believe that everyone knew about Aldridge engaging in inappropriate conduct with players. Neither Boynton nor Sopel could provide many details. That was in the report. And that is because there are powerful players that were on that team that are still playing or still involved. Who knew? Guys, let's, let's also pull this out. Uh, and, and I think it's important that we mention this. I got some tweets from Montreal yesterday Bye. regarding Mark Bergevin. Bye. Specifically at me, because I have I've been like, I said on a couple episodes ago, I don't think he's going to keep his job. And I think, you know, Jesse, I thought made a great point, And I saw Arpin Basu saying something similar that it would, I think it was Arpin Basu, if I misquoted this, I apologize, but that it, 
if you're Jeff Molson, you're waiting for this to come out before you you do any extensions. Although we do know that he did offer him an extension. Mm-hmm. We do know that it was well below Mark Bergevin's expectations. He offered him pennies. I was talking to a few people about this, a few people who are really smart, and I don't know if I can quote who they were, but if you're listening to this, you know I, I texted you this and you responded this way. So I, I'm not really sure if I can ask, if I can name this person. So I won't. I said, okay, so Bergevin, not mentioned. Does that mean innocent or not? And to a person, everybody said, well, no, it just means it's not substantiated. And that can be, it can be he is or he isn't. We still don't know. But one person nailed it. And that person said, at very least, if he did not know, he's one of the most incompetent directors of player personnel I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, how is it possible that four years later, a former Chicago Blackhawks teammate is chasing uh, John Doe or no Black Ace One down the ice and saying, hey, do you want to blow? Did you like that blow job yeah. on the ice and director of player personnel? Guy who talked to Bowman, Dayoff, Quinville, McDonough, McIsaac, pretty much every day. Didn't know. If he didn't, it's incompetence. If he did, it's inaction. I, I'm, willing, <coughs> I'm willing to believe he didn't know right away. I'm willing to believe that. Yeah. I can believe that. Sure. 100% I'm, I can believe that. I'm willing to that. believe it. Yep. He wasn't at the meeting. If he was, we'd know he wasn't there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, to your point, it's over the years, right? You're the director of player personnel. You must have heard. Yeah, all the players knew. (laughs) Why why this? But now do we believe the words? Hold hold on, hold on. Director of player personnel, video coach gone. He doesn't ask? Yeah, we just want to cup with this guy and he's gone. Mm -hmm. And we give him a $35,000 pay. Well, he may not know about the settlement. That's true. But he's just gone? Where'd he go? Also, Rick spoke to people, I believe it was in the advertising department or the PR department who they knew were this. marketing, he, I think. He, in marketing. Mar- marketing yes. That was it if, to just get some background on the story that happened. And the people in the marketing department knew. I have a hard time believing that the president of player personnel wouldn't know. So um, quickly on um, quickly on this. Uh, I just want to quickly mention a couple of things and then we'll sort of get to our takeaways here. Uh, Steve, you already mentioned the Bill Guerin, Stan Bowman connection at USA Hockey. We need to mention quickly that um, John Doe said he contacted the NHLPA uh, and the executive director Donald Fear in late 2010 about concerns sorry, a confident of John, a confidant of John Doe said he contacted the NHLPA executive Don Fear uh, in late 2010 about concerns Aldridge was uh, working for USA Hockey after leaving the Blackhawks. And you have to remember, he was a part of Ron Wilson's coaching staff at the U.S. Olympics. Right, which would have been earlier that year. Would right. have been January, February 2010. And Aldridge would know Ron Wilson from his time with San Jose when Wilson was the head coach there. And his father, who's a 30-year employee of San Jose, the San Jose Sharks. And still there. And, and still, still there. As well. Yeah. He's a head equipment manager. JD, uh, uh, John Doe's confidant said to fear, said fear told him the NHLPA would look into the situation that the NHL could offer, NHLPA could offer support. And I'm going to go quickly here. The confidant recalled fear suggesting that the individual could speak to an NHLPA affiliated therapist, even though the individual was not an NHLPA member. When interviewed, fear stated he did not recall a conversation with John Doe's confidant, although he did not deny that it um, occurred. That, to me, feels like, how do you forget a conversation like that? I don't know what it's like to be the head of the NHLPA, but that feels like a conversation I don't forget. Useless organization. Useless. I'm trying to figure it out. But, you know, again, you know, you can only go on what people tell you on this one. So here this, here's the takeaways, and this is the first thing. We also have one more advertising slot if you want to pause. For okay, that. we'll pause here. Listen, you've heard me talk about Manscaped a bunch of times. And given the seriousness of this show, I think you'll understand that I'm just going to give you the straight up goods. They are the world leaders in male grooming. So if that's something you're looking for, or if you're tired of using what you're using, Manscaped is the place for you. It's manscaped.com. Use the uh, code DANGLE. And really, if you want the best, you should just get this. Accident-free. The package actually is pretty amazing. It comes with the tools that you need to get the job done. And of course, some deodorizers and a really nice pair of boxer briefs too. I'm a boxer brief guy. I love it. And honestly, if you go to manscaped.com, use that promo code DANGLE, get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, I mean, I don't know how you could find a better deal. So check it out. 
Everywhere across the world is using this, and you should too. 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code DANGLE. Don't miss out on this. It's the best. You may as well shop for the best and get yourself the best because you deserve it. So takeaways from this, and I want to, I'm going to give you some of mine. Tell me what you think. And again, I, I want to repeat, we know that we didn't get everything here. It's impossible to get everything. We tried to get the major details to you. These legal documents are difficult to read, and we have the best reporters in the game right now as I'm speaking into this recording, still releasing information that some of us did not know. So, well, and this and this is just to peel back the curtain. This is how things get backed up: is they air it live. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who watch it live watch it live. Then there's the people who have to catch up, and then after a 17 minute, I don't know, deposition. I don't know what you call it. That's that's enough. That's that's a news. That's a full news day's worth of content. Yes. Mm -hmm. After that, they released a 107 page legal document. It's impossible to get through it. Impossible. You can try. Yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 you know we tried our best to give you the the basics here. Um, that is why Rick Westhead will be joining us on Friday. It's important that we get Rick on and give some of his insights. And obviously, we expect more things to break. We don't know when. We don't know what they are. But we expect that there's going to be more information that comes out about this. And we had to reschedule David Shapiro. From, yes, uh, from Blue Shirt Blog. Yeah, sorry about that, David. Uh, we we, we did, didn't know this was coming. We so. did David dirty on uh, on an episode a little bit, and I felt bad about it, and and I wanted him to come on and explain the Chris Drury situation and his opinion on it. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, given you know, we had last episode we had Sid and Alan, and then now today and Friday will be Chicago Blackhawks, and I know then David has to go back and work his full-time job. He's just had a kid as well. Oh, so we'll, we'll oh, figure wow. out at some point we're going to have David Shapiro on because uh, we want to you know, highlight him and we want him to talk about this because I would love to have that situation explained. Outside of that, the takeaways from the Blackhawks situation for me, beyond, and, and this should come as a, an obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway, beyond the horrendous nature of what happened to everybody involved, right? Like, I think we're all agreed. There is no degree of empathy that feels like enough for everybody involved in that. Yeah. For all the victims of that. So let's put that on, put that out front. I wonder about, you know, the, we, I work with somebody who was in Chicago at a radio station called B96 when Chicago won its three cups, uh, Jamar, Jamar McNeil. And uh, oh, yeah? and yeah, Jamar was he was the morning show host. It was uh, and and Jamar is now the morning show host with my mom at Chum here in Toronto. Really good broadcaster. And he said, "Man, when the when the Blackhawks won, he's like, I have never had more fun in radio." He said it was unbelievable. So we, thousands of people out in the streets, and he said we were doing so much stuff on the radio side, and and he's, he he went into just how incredible it was. What an amazing experience it was. And if you're a fan that went through that, and, and anybody that's won a Stanley Cup, and any city that's won the Stanley Cup will tell you the same thing. It's pretty great. If you're a fan that went through that, that first cup in such a long time can't not be tainted. And so this enormous victory, you know, we've, the hockey media and the NHL, for that matter, have been obsessed with Chicago for like 15 years. Before that, when Wirtz Sr. was the head and he didn't want the games on TV because it would affect ticket sales in a different era, the Chris Chelios years and before. But, but you know, ever since the, the, you know, the young guys, quote unquote, young guys back in the day, Taze, Kane, um, uh, Seabrook. Seabrook, Keith, Keith uh, Corey Crawford, et cetera, Marion Host, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Exciting team. Christopher Steve. Christopher, Christopher Steve. <laughs> Ver Beauty, as we used to call him here. He um, wrapped in front of two million people after winning the Stanley It's amazing. Like, it's amazing. They were fun to watch. I feel like if I'm a player on that team and I legitimately didn't know, I would be, A, I'd hit the roof for my teammate for that, you know, what happened, or my teammates. B, you, there are people in that organization who put in a ton of work, who deserve to look on that memory fondly. How do you ever think about that again without this being in the, in the back of your mind? 
How do you ever think about that Stanley Cup run and not mention this? Well, and if you ever win the Cup again, or if you ever go and visit it in the Hockey Hall of Fame, there's his name next to yours. Now, they're going to take that off. They, they must. They I'm, have how have they not? The guy yeah. went to jail. Like, I, I don't understand why they didn't do this four years ago when he went to jail. Do we all forget? I don't know if it's coming off. Like, I don't. You can do that, can't you? you can, but, like, I they, I, they 100% can, but will they? I don't know. They must. They, they should. To. They should have done it, like you said, when he went to jail. Aldrich's name should not be on the Stanley Cup. That's disgusting. Careers and lives were changed forever because of this. And, I, and I, it's important. You know, I, I remember there was a... a um, there was a band that we all sort of knew in Canada, and I won't mention them. We all knew that the lead singer was up to no good. Um, and I remember there's a story about a morning show host, and I won't name him, but I know him well enough. Uh, this particular lead singer put his hand up this radio host's girlfriend's skirt at a bar. And um, the radio host obviously hit the roof. and. What was interesting about it, when you look back in retrospect, he went on the air the next day and told the whole story, said the whole thing. And you know what happened? Both the record company and the media company, which no longer exists, the media company has been bought out since, said, you have to go on the air and issue an apology. The record company threatened to sue him and sue the radio station. And sue the company behind the radio station. So he had to go on the air and apologize for it. And he did because he had to because he was going to lose his job. This person has now been outed as a person that has on multiple occasions assaulted women sexually. And I remember when the it singer. first... Yes, this singer. And I remember when this first came out because we all kind of knew. It was, like, it was like we were the marketing department at Chicago. We all kind of knew. Well, and the, the term you used was up to no good. And that's, I mean, it's rather innocent. I said up to no good because I, you know, was bad news. It, well, it's, it's code speak for like when you're in the office and you know something's bad and nobody really wants to say it. But like, that's I'm how sure, it's communicated. I'm sure all those words were spoken in this Aldridge case too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, about that and that was... A long time ago that was pre me too mm -hmm. pre all that stuff should we have known better for sure I, was i at that station at the time no i was not i didn't find out till i got there um but i just think about that story a lot and i think about his girlfriend and him and how they must have felt you think about the you know his job is at stake but the love of his life was assaulted And what, the reason I bring that story up is power dynamics. Ken Campbell nailed it in his article. Rick Westhead's talked about it. Katie Strang's talked about it. So many people have talked about it. Aldrich had the ability here to make or break this particular player's career, and he knew it, and he targeted him. Why do you think in the Stanley Cup celebrations, Aldrich went after an intern? Why do you think he went after an intern? Why do you think? A subordinate. Yeah. Basically. What's an intern going to say to a coach? What's an intern's word against the coach? And, you know, the, the, the Wurtz family, to their credit, delivered all this information and then said, we are much different even pre this investigation than we were in 2010. I hope that's true. I would assume that it is. Everybody's grown in the last 10 years immensely. I would hope you've grown. But what we need to do, and I don't know why this doesn't exist, is you've got the NHLPA and each team has an HR team. How does this still happen? Well, this is the thing. The HR team was involved. They were involved late, and then they violated their own policy. So what's the point? What's the point in any of it? Right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, I just... I think that if there's one thing I want you to take away from all of this, it's something that we probably haven't ever thought about. 
And it's the stuff that created the Bill Cosby's and the Harvey Weinstein's and everybody else that, that has done this en masse for years. And, and the Aldridge's as well. The Brad Aldridge's. And that is positions of power and abuse of it. And we cannot, we ha- whenever there's a situation where somebody has power and nobody can say anything to them, there's probably going to be some sort of abuse there. Not, not necessarily every time, but if that's a systemic thing, if that's, well, you can't say anything to the coach. Well, there's, that opens you up to abuse, doesn't it? And I want you to think about in your life, and I don't know how to change this. You probably have to talk to an HR professional or an employment lawyer or whatever. Those people are the smart ones. Therapists. I would love to see, and I challenge the NHL, who have the quote-unquote 1-800 number, to do better than the quote-unquote 1-800 number because someone's voice is being recorded and have some sort of system in place where members of the PA or not members of the PA who are involved with NHL franchises can go and say and safely say, this happened. I don't want to lose my job or my career, but this happened and it's not right. We cannot allow this to continue. This person, this John Doe one, this intern, both John Doe's, the intern, both black aces in, in, named in this, in this, have for more than 10 years lived with this. Well, all of us went about our daily lives. We had no idea and they lived with it every single day. At a certain point, I need the NHL. I need the NHL to step up and be extremely public about how things can be reported anonymously and protecting victims. I am challenging Gary Bettman with no pull in this game. I have nothing. But I am challenging the NHL to say, okay, guys, we're going to work on it. I, and I'm not asking the solution to be perfect. We can improve on it. can start somewhere. But start. We must look at power dynamics in this game and how people can be left vulnerable and taken advantage of. And we cannot let this happen. We cannot let this stuff happen. We cannot let it go on for 10 years like this. Because at the end of the day, the legal aside, the money aside, somebody's life is wrecked by this. And, and Steve, you mentioned this in, in regards to Evander Kane, but I think, it's, I think it was an important thing. A lifetime's work. You said, you know, if you're around Evander Kane and you're saying this is okay... And, and his situation is very different. I know that. Of course. But you were talking about the, the fake vaccine passport. And you're saying, hey, if you're around Evander Kane, you are wrecking a man's lifetime of work. By enabling him. And- right. We have, in a different way, you've wrecked somebody else's, multiple people's lifetimes. They spent their whole lives from the times they were little kids doing this. And I just, I don't know, I don't know what the solution is. But it's got to be more than Gary Bettman's going to talk to some guys in some markets. There has to be movement from the NHL, all 32 owners, on something where there's a lever system that, that like, where it's like, if there's a problem, fucking pull the lever. Anonymously. Yes. Yes. This something that a- doesn't track an IP, that doesn't record your voice, that prompts investigations, right. protects victims. Sorry to take your time on that, but I just felt like it needed. No, something no, needs to right. come of this. Like this is too it's too big of a story for there not to be consequences, not just for everybody involved in the story, but just the culture afterwards and the the league itself and hockey and we need to grow from this because that's what it's all about. It's about learning and growing and there needs to be something done once there this whole aftermath is concluded. So we'll have um, Rick Westhead on next episode. Uh, if you have questions about this, leave them in the Discord, please. Uh, we encourage you to do so. We may, we may not be able to get to all of them, and Rick may answer some of them without us even asking. But we'd love to know what questions the most are burning in your mind so that we can at least give you the best possible episode tomorrow. And I know Rick, Rick's whole thing is always about people understanding. He really wants you to understand so if there's, uh, if there's anything, Jesse? And if you're commenting about the story on Discord, please put up the spoilers uh, with your trigger warning if it is pertaining to sexual yes. assault. And spoil- by the way, what Jesse means by that is actually what's so cool about Discord, if you've never been on it, is there's spoilers where it blacks out the text unless you click on the text. 
Mm -hmm. Uh Just super cool, Uh right? So like they do that with your LFR. It's like, hey, can you believe when Steve said, and then it's blacked out, and it's like it's redacted, but if you want to click on it, you can. Very neat. Kind of neat, right? Anyway, um, do you guys have anything else you want to add? We're not done. We're not done. Jesse? Yeah, we got news what coming down today sometime. Got mm-hmm. news coming down today. We got uh, one of the biggest media markets in the States uh, going head-to-head with the biggest media market in Canada today. All the Toronto reporters are going to be in Chicago. All the Chicago reporters, reporters are already in Chicago. They're going to be asking uh, their players about it. I imagine former players uh, who are in other markets, think of Duncan Keith, are probably going to get asked about it. Joel Quinville already had to squirm in front of a podium today. Kevin Chitwell, day off, uh, can't be far behind him. Uh, God knows what's going to happen with the whole Bill Guerin thing. And who knows what tomorrow has in store. We're not done. We should be watching tonight's game because you have a winless team going up against the Leafs who are imploding on a four-game losing streak and look terrible. Yep. But we're going to be watching for a completely different reason and for the worst reasons ever, it's a must-watch TV event. Yep. So with that, uh, you can expect... Uh, the episode with Rick West had to be a little bit later on Friday night because we have to record a little bit later. That's my fault. That's It's not anybody's fault. It's my just, fault. It's just what happens. So it won't be the usual 4 p.m. upload that you're used to now. A lot 5 of people, p.m. Oh, 5 p.m. Sorry. Yeah, I got to get faster internet. Um, I could, if I have faster internet, I could get this show up. So okay, well, we can probably there. solve that. I, I think ah. we can we can manage that for you. But anyway, long story <laughs> short, um, we, we just want to just want to mention that it won't be up at the normal time. It's just going to be a little bit later. We apologize. It's just the way it, it went this week. Uh, but Rick will be on answering our questions, answering yours. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you Friday. The Steve Dangle podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W Y L D E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.